Hey guys, welcome back to another Facebook Live broadcast, the first one of 2018. Happy New Year. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Sarah King. I am the owner and founder of Invigorate Physical Therapy and Wellness here in Austin, Texas, and my practice is 100% specialized in helping people diagnosed with Parkinson's create a plan of attack and regain the ability to go about the life that they love, feel empowered, and really be healthier and happier uh, year over year. So I am so excited about our launch of our Facebook Live broadcasts. Today is a really exciting topic, obviously one I'm very passionate about as a physical therapist, which is exercise. So if you are um, someone who's been diagnosed with Parkinson's and you've heard about how impactful exercise can be on your Parkinson's symptoms, but you maybe haven't started an exercise program or you're looking to restart an exercise program, maybe you had some momentum with an exercise program over before the holidays and now you're looking to get back on the wagon or maybe you've lost some momentum because you had an injury, a fall, an illness, you know, that tends to happen over the winter months and you're not sure if you can go back to doing what you were doing before because your situation has changed. If any of that applies to you, I'm so excited you're here because this is going to be a super helpful broadcast for you. We're going to talk all about getting started or restarting your Parkinson's exercise program. And I'm going to give you a really helpful guide that I talk with people ad nauseum with um, about. And this is one of the most popular questions I get as a physical therapist, which is, how do I know where to start my exercise program? Should I go see a physical therapist? Maybe I could only see a personal trainer, or I've heard so much about these group classes like boxing and pedaling for Parkinson's, um, but there's so much available online. How do I know in the thick of all this exercise um, availability where to start? And I have a great guide for you. I'm gonna talk you through the difference between all of those modalities and also give you a framework so that you can identify for yourself where you are and what exercise modality might be the best for you. So I have created a one page PDF, which is um, gonna guide you through all of these different options and you can download it over on the blog. Um, it talks to you through physical therapy, personal training, group fitness class, and online programs, and it's really helpful. You can download it for free at the website. Um, the link is either above or to the side of this video, and if you're watching live, Lauren's gonna put it in the comment section below. So make sure that you click on that, download that. You should be able to open that and download that without losing this video. Um, and just comment in the comments section below. Let me know where you're checking in from, um, why you're here. Are you on an exercise program? Are you, do you have questions about the exercise program you're on? Put them in the comments section below. Lauren is going to gather them up and shoot them over to me, and we will make sure to get them answered at the end of this broadcast because I believe so passionately in the power of exercise for people diagnosed with Parkinson's. It is the most powerful thing that you can do for your symptoms, not just now, but for the long run. Um, research proves it time after time, and I wanna make sure that you don't have any obstacles to getting started on a program because it will literally change your life. And I know there are a lot of people watching who have changed their diagnosis and their symptoms with exercise. And if that's you, just give me a huge thumbs up, put it in the comment section below. If you're passionate about exercise for Parkinson's, share this video. Um, the more people that know how um, powerful and life-changing exercise is for a Parkinson's diagnosis, the more we can change healthcare. So, sorry, went on a little tangent there, totally unplanned, but I'm really excited to come back to you this year. Just say hi in the comment section below. Uh, let me know you're here. I see so many people checking in. Um, and as I say hi here, I'm um, gonna get started on um, our talk here in a second. Also, I wanted to say that this talk goes well with a blog post that I did. Um, it's the same blog post where the free PDF is listed and it talks through seven questions that you should be asking yourself when you're starting a Parkinson's exercise program. 
and it outlines more than we'll probably talk about here when you answer those questions what category you might fall into if you are more physical therapy or group fitness or whatnot so that um, blog post again is linked above or to the side of this video bookmark it share it it is literally one of my most popular posts because it is really really helpful um, Okay, it looks like Mammy's in here, Roger, Christine, Happy New Year, Nora, of course, Liz, Happy New Year, I think Liz is from Australia, if I remember right, Yvette from the UK, hello, welcome, Marlene, always good to see you in here, and Bonnie from Alabama, um, Sally's in here from freezing Kansas City, it's pretty cold in Austin too, it's 26 degrees, I think, which is not bad. Um, but Bruce is here. Welcome, Bruce. Good to see you back here. Irene, as always, welcome. Um, let's see, we've got Ron in here from Wisconsin. I bet it's colder in Wisconsin than it is here in Austin. Um, John DeBlasi is in Missouri, I know. Um, a fellow Missourian. And Sally from Arlington. Guys, you're awesome. Okay, so as we go, like I said, um, and Debbie says, hi from Royce City. Hi, Debbie. Welcome back. Um, so as I go here, if you have questions um, or if you want to hit a thumbs up, a heart, an angry face, you can participate that way. Um, I love interacting with you guys. The more comments you have, um, the better this is for everyone. So just put them in the comment section below. I'd love to answer your questions. So today's topic um, really hits on your exercise program, which as you already know is the most powerful thing you could possibly be doing for your Parkinson's symptoms. Um, they research just shows time after time that it increase it does a lot of things for you but essentially it's going to increase the effectiveness of your dopamine medication um, it's going to prevent you from um, having any type of decline it's going to keep you mobile and independent in the long run so if you're not exercising stay put if you are exercising let's make sure that you're doing the type of exercise that you need to get the most benefit and the most bang for your buck right now. It looks like Cindy's in here from Canada. Oh, I know it's cold up there. Okay. All right. So my question that I usually get, and if there's a physical therapist watching, uh, which I know there are some of you, you probably get this question too, which is with so many options available out there, how do I know where to start? So you have... Um, we're going to boil the, this answer down to one of four categories. You could either go see a physical therapist, you could go see a personal trainer, do some type of group fitness class, or do some type of online program. We're going to talk about online programs a little bit here, and those can vary. But for instance, I have an online program. It's a five-week um, Parkinson-specific exercise program, and it walks you through week by week exercises to help with your strength, your flexibility, your coordination, your stamina. Um, that program is called the Booster Program, and we are enrolling new boosters this week. Um, I promise not to talk about that ad nauseum, but if you want to check that out, it's um, invigoratept.com slash booster. And, you know, all of these four categories... Um, you may do at different points along your Parkinson's journey, or you may be doing two at once. You may be seeing um, a personal trainer and doing an online program. You may be um, doing a group fitness class and seeing a physical therapist. You may be doing a combination of some of these things, so don't feel like you have to be siphoned into one or the other. But when you're going through where to start with your exercise program, there are seven things that you need to keep in mind. Okay, so the first thing that you should keep in mind is what is your personality? Do you prefer one-on-one? -on -one? Do you like working out in a group? Um, you know, do you, are you pretty self-motivated and independent? There it is. I don't know if I cut out. Okay, so it froze on my screen. So the first question is where are you on your journey? Um, or sorry, the first question is what is your personality? The second question is where are you on your Parkinson's journey? And whether you're newly diagnosed, you've been diagnosed for three years, five years, some people have been diagnosed with 25 years, where are you on your journey? That matters where you start. Um, what are your goals? You know, what are you hoping to achieve? What is your budget is question number four. What is the schedule that you prefer? Number five. Number six is um, how much expertise do you need or want? 
And then the seventh question you need to consider is how much guidance or supervision do you need? So those seven things are gonna come into play. And again, on the blog, I walk you through those seven questions. And if you answer a certain way, it'll tell you you're a better candidate for physical therapy or you're a better candidate for group fitness classes. So if you wanna really dive in, head over to the blog, but I'm gonna go through the answers to those seven questions when it comes to physical therapy, personal training, group fitness, and online programs. So the first thing that I'm gonna to talk to you about is physical therapy. So if you have had physical therapy for Parkinson's specifically, just give me a thumbs up. Um, I hear a lot of people who have, uh, have gone to physical therapy but their therapist wasn't specialized in Parkinson's and maybe you've gone for your back um, but not specifically for your Parkinson's symptoms. And there are physical therapists out there like myself, like a few people who are watching probably, who are specifically trained in how to help people with Parkinson's exercise. And there's a difference because your brain is functioning differently than the general public. And I see some thumbs up and some hearts. Just share your experience if you're comfortable. What was your experience with physical therapy? Put it in the comment section below. And um, <clears throat> we can talk more about what a Parkinson's specific exercise program should look like at a later day, but your physical therapist will be able to um, help you tailor your program more specifically to you. So here's how you know if you're ready for physical therapy. If you've been recently diagnosed and you haven't had a Parkinson's specific physical therapist, you need to go see a physical therapist if there's one in your area. This is because they can be one of your greatest advocates during your Parkinson's journey and they can track you from the very beginning. You may go in and you may not need physical therapy right now. Chances are if you've been diagnosed and and you have symptoms that are noticeable enough, you could benefit from at least a few sessions of physical therapy, if not to just get some measurements done, um, give you some preventative exercises to be able to, um, you know, you don't wanna go see a physical therapist only when you're starting to quote unquote get bad. You can go see a physical therapist proactively and say, I have Parkinson's, how do you build a program for me that's Parkinson specific that helps me prevent symptoms from developing or symptoms from worsening over time, you need to be seeing a physical therapist before you feel like you need to. So if you've been newly diagnosed, look up a Parkinson's PT. There's a link on how to do that on my blog. Okay, if you have had a recent illness that's left you feeling tired, unsteady, or weak, so in the PT world we call this a decline in status, um, if you have been ill or had an injury that's knocked you down a few pegs lower than what your normal baseline is, physical therapists are designed to help you restore that gap and go further, but at least restore that gap to start with. And um, this is a good time to seek out physical therapy. If you have noticed, maybe you haven't had an illness or a fall, something abrupt or acute, but you've noticed that you're starting to change the way you do things compared to your norm. So you start to avoid walking on grass because you feel unsteady. You start to avoid going to the grocery store because it feels really overwhelming and your feet for some reason get stuck to the floor. Um, you are having a harder time getting out of chairs. So you've noticed that you, you know, push up with both arms now instead of spring out of the chair. Nothing's happened to you acutely, but you have noticed that you modify the things that you do every day. This is a great time to see a PT. They can help you get back to your previous level and exceed it um, if you go see them um, in time, <laughs> essentially. They can go and they can help you restore um, your, you know, kind of some of your deficits that you've been modifying um, and probably making excuses for, but this is a good time to go see a PT. Okay, and then finally, if you have fallen in the last three to six months, this is a good time to go see a PT. Um, one last thing is that um, if your physician has referred you to physical therapy and you haven't gotten it, um, so if you've never had a physical therapist that's specific in Parkinson's, but you have a referral, this is a time to go see a physical therapist. Obviously, your neurologist wants you to do it, and it's a great time to get a PT on your team. And your PT, when you have a Parkinson's diagnosis, should be part of your annual checkup team. Um, you should be checking in with your physical therapist proactively at least once a year, the same way that you go see a dentist. 
um, to have them measure where you're at, adjust your program because maybe last year you had troubles with um, dragging your toe and now you're pretty good with that but you've noticed your arm isn't swinging or you haven't noticed that but maybe your physical therapist will be able to notice that and proactively give you some exercises. So checking in with them once a year if you haven't been to physical therapy in the last year it may be a good time to go get a tune-up. Okay so when you're looking for um, a physical therapist, like I said, you want to find one that's specialized in Parkinson's and these are the people who will be able to give you the um, expertise, the guidance, um, the safety cues, they're going to check your form, um, they're going to give you really individualized attention. This is the most skilled individualized attention that you will get as a uh, Parkinson's client and you should take advantage of it at least once if not once a year. So find a good one, um, go over to the blog, you can find some links to help you search for someone in your area, or you can always message me and I can see um, if I can help you connect with someone. So the other thing when it comes to cost about physical therapy is typically it is covered by your insurance. At least a, a few sessions are covered by your insurance. You may have a small copay, but typically this is one of the more affordable um, options because insurance will pay for it to some degree. Now if you're on Medicare versus private insurance the amount of physical therapy you can get varies but you are always you always have the opportunity and the option to pay out of pocket to pay cash um, if you have the um, you know financial ability to do so. That's my practice is 100% um, cash based because um, Otherwise, the insurance companies get to dictate how much therapy you get and how much um, of what kind of therapy you get. So it's a soapbox I'll stay off of for today. But that's how you know. If you have any other questions about physical therapy, put them in the comment section below. I'd be happy to answer them. But that is why you may be good for physical therapy. So if you think that you are headed to physical therapy this year, wear that badge of honor with pride because they will be one of your greatest assets on your PT team or on your Parkinson's team. Um, I know I'm biased, but it's so true. Okay, so give me a thumbs up if you think physical therapy is where you're going to start this year. And if you need help finding a therapist, we will help get that squared away. Okay, the second category we're going to talk about when it comes to starting an exercise program is to explore, could you go see a personal trainer? Now, there are some overlap with um, physical therapy and personal training, but not as much as many people think. So a personal trainer is typically, um, there are Parkinson's specific physical therapists and there can be Parkinson's specific personal trainers. And the power program, which I'm trained through, trains both physical therapists and personal trainers. So it is possible to find both. And you wanna make sure that your personal trainer, maybe they're more affordable than insurance or um, you know, a personal trainer, typically comes into play after you graduate from physical therapy and you've, you know, you've made up this gap and now you're ready for some general fitness. You can now do all of your daily activities, but you want to be able to go walk, um, you know, a 10K with your family or go, you know, hike in the mountains or something above and beyond what you do in your daily life. Um, that might be a good time to transition to a personal trainer because insurance typically won't pay for you to go above and beyond your daily activities in physical therapy. So a personal trainer can help you do that. Um, they can also give you some supervision. If you're afraid you're going to hurt yourself, they can cue you on form, um, whereas you know a, a group fitness class typically doesn't, but we'll get there in a second. And also, if you have other fitness goals, other health goals that go beyond anything specific to Parkinson's. You want to lose weight, you want to get more energy, um, you want to get more flexible, you want to learn how to do yoga. You know, I realize Parkinson's doesn't run your life um, a major or all the time. So um, if you're going to see a personal trainer, they can help you with some other various fitness goals that maybe are not Parkinson's specific. But you do want to ask your personal trainer, have you had experience with Parkinson's? Um, and ask them kind of what their comfort level is because it does make a difference. You want them to push you and typically if a personal trainer hasn't worked with Parkinson's clientele before, they um, may be, they may be a little bit more hesitant. Not all, not all, not all personal trainers. So 
Those are really good things to know about personal training. Again, it's not covered by insurance. It is out of pocket, so there's that cost, um, that cost component also. Now, both personal training and physical therapy are great for accountability. Um, you have a real life person that's you know waiting on you to show up. So accountability is really good if that's your personality. You like that one on one accountability. This is a good place for you to start. Um, and I'm trying to think of what else for personal training. Yeah, accountability. That's probably the end of personal training. So if you have a personal trainer, um, maybe tag them in this post. I would love to meet more Parkinson's personal trainers. Uh, let me know what your experience has been with your personal trainer. And um, if you've gone to both, maybe you've had a difference between the two. Okay, Marie says, my physical therapist was wonderful. He has the exercises online. So if you forgot what the exercises are, you can check them out anytime. That's really helpful. All right, hi Tino, hi Larry. Welcome guys. All right, so let's move on. We've talked about physical therapy. If you're joining us late, we've talked about personal training. We're gonna move into group fitness training. So give me a thumbs up if you go to any group classes or you have in the past, like rock steady boxing, pedaling for Parkinson's, Qigong, adaptive yoga, um, there are so many options for Parkinson's exercise classes and I love the opportunities that are available. So let's talk about if you would be a good candidate because sometimes people think um, certain things about group fitness classes that maybe aren't true. So if you enjoy working out in groups, um, a group fitness program obviously would be good for you. If you, you know, I call these people tribesmen who love the clan. I'm one of those people. That's why I have a tribe. That's why I have you. Um, I love my tribe. So I love group fitness. I love bringing people together. I love the camaraderie. If you love, if you want to have this like family outside of your home, it can be a great place to form a lot of bonds. And typically, if it's a Parkinson specific group fitness class, the instructor has some background and training in Parkinson's um, clientele. If they're marketing it as a Parkinson's class, most of the time, you do wanna do your homework, ask them where your, their training has been. Understand that in a group fitness class, you're not gonna get individualized attention and it is going to be averaged out. So the, the instructor is going to look at the group of 10, 15, some classes have many more than that, which um, may not be the greatest, but it is still movement. So um, they're not gonna be able to give you individualized attention if it's say more than six people to one trainer. So if you're okay with that and you're not looking to specifically improve any deficits like you know, freezing or you want specific strategies, a group fitness class is a great place to be. And we have a wonderful group fitness class here in Austin. It's called Power for Parkinson's. There are, um, there's so much camaraderie there. And I think attendance is like 96% because the community is really what brings people together. So you do have to have the ability to get a ride. Obviously you do have to have something in your area. Although there are some um, Parkinson's fitness classes that live stream their videos so that you could do it from home. Um, just make sure that you there's not a safety issue there. And um, also understand that if you are a fall risk, the safety and the expertise and the, um, the guidance, just make sure that your fitness instructor knows that you have some issues with freezing sometimes or that you might need things modified um, because of a specific um, you know, obstacle that you particularly face. Make sure your group fitness class instructor is aware of that so that they can modify things to you as well. Okay, so again, if you have symptoms that are specific that you have to talk to your group fitness class instructor about, like freezing or you know back pain, those are also indicators that you would benefit from a physical therapist. So pain is always a good reason to go see a physical therapist um, and any of those limitations. So you may be doing both. You may be, and I send a lot of my clients to group fitness classes, <clears throat> excuse me, to group fitness classes while we're doing physical therapy so that they get a good well-rounded program. So you can be doing both. Okay, Mammy says she does belly dancing, yoga, and Zumba. Gosh, that's amazing, I love dancing. Marie does pedaling for Parkinson's and boxing. 
Elaine, welcome Elaine. I don't remember seeing you in here before, but you've done dance class and you found it very good. That's amazing. Dance is so good for your brain. Um, Tyler Tracy, love seeing another PT in here, Tyler and Debbie. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, so those are reasons why a group training class may be good for you. And to find a group fitness class in your area, it may take some digging. Um, check with your local community centers. Um, ask the physical therapist in your area, or maybe that you see if they know of any good group fitness classes. Typically they do. And, you know, looking on Rock City Boxing, pedaling for Parkinson's websites, um, Dance for Parkinson's, Dance for PD. They all have programs all around the country, so those are good places to start. Okay, so our fourth and final category is online programs or online training. So this can run the gamut, right? This can be um, as simple as um, a video posted on YouTube, which we definitely have a lot of those at Invigorate, and all the way up to solidified actual plans and programs that you can do from home that are more structured. So again, the uh, program that I built and I offered 100% because I had so many people reach out to me from outside of Austin that needed a program. Um, I mainly heard that these people, it might be you watching, you are in the middle of you know Toronto or you're in the middle of nowhere Canada or Wisconsin or Minnesota and you can't drive 45 minutes to an hour three days a week to go see you know, uh, the group fitness class. And so you want something you can do from home. Online training is a great place to do that. This is the program that I built. Um, there are some other options we're gonna talk about too. Um, it's called the Booster Program. It's five weeks long. It's open for enrollment this week. So total shameless plug. But I, um, in my opinion, it is one of the um, best programs to balance motivation and accountability and guidance with exercise and everything's laid out for you. It's one click and it's there, very low tech. So all you really have to do with my program um, and most of these online videos, if you're looking for an online option, is just be able to play a video. And um, the thing that you want to incorporate with online training though, is if you're doing um, exercise videos, say on YouTube, that you found either on Invigorate site or many other sites that are out there, um, you want to have some type of accountability. So whether it's an accountability partner um, or a support group, online support group, you want to make sure that you have someone keeping you accountable unless you're really motivated. If you are an independent um, loansman, as I would say, if you're a loansman and you like to work out on your own, you're very committed and disciplined, and I have a few of those clients, um, and exercising on your own, getting up, watching the videos, doing your exercises, and excuse me, going about your day is really easy for you. You may be great with an online program. Um, an online program also is great to supplement your other activities with. So maybe you're doing group fitness class, you've got boxing on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays, and you just want something to do on the days in between, maybe two or three days a week. An online program or plugging in some online videos would be a great place to do that as well. Um, if you're not particularly self-motivated, um, just picking out YouTube videos might not be the best option for you because you do want to reach a level of intensity um, that is challenging. That's what's important about a Parkinson-specific exercise program. So staying at home and just doing videos on YouTube that are just stretching and not doing anything else you may not be getting the most benefit from your exercise program because it's not intense, it's not tailored to you, um, but it could be a good supplement if you're getting those in other places. So if you can't drive, again, this is a good option for you. So I'm mostly talking about, when I say online programs, I'm mostly talking about videos available online. Now there are some DVDs um, you know, that you could play from home if you still have a DVD player. Um, I think Davis Finney Foundation has some videos that they put up that are really good. Um, and Brian Grant Foundation has some videos that they put up that, that are good. 
So those are what I'm talking about when it comes to online videos or online programs. If you've done an online program and you, and I haven't mentioned it, put it in the comment section below. I'd love to know about it. Um, but again, if you're interested in doing the online program and you're interested in joining the booster program, um, this week is, we're starting a whole new round of boosters on Monday. So you can go to invigoratept.com slash booster to check it out, learn more. Um, I think we had last year, um, in January, we had 88 people join in January. Um, and I hop on once a week to do a Facebook live broadcast just to our booster program because online programs can be hard when you don't have someone holding you accountable. So make sure that if you're doing an online program, you have someone to hold you accountable. That's preferably not your spouse or the person that you live with because that can get dicey sometimes. So those are our four options. Again, to recap, we've got personal training, physical therapy, group fitness classes, and online programs. And again, if you um, are a little overwhelmed with everything I just threw at you, go check out the blog post. It's linked either above or to the side of this video. And I created for you a one page PDF outline that walks you through the different elements, who it's best for, your goals, um, what criteria you might have to meet to be you know, doing physical therapy or personal training, the cost of each, frequency that would be required, and the safety and expertise level. So this is a great little free downloadable PDF. You can check it out and figure out where you are best to start and um, just know that if you're going to start, start. It doesn't, if you're, don't be paralyzed by being um, analysis. What is that? Analysis paralysis. Don't overthink it. If you feel instinctual that you should go see a physical therapist, go do it. If you want to hop on our online program, come do it. Um, if you're really stuck, reach out, ask. I would love to answer your questions. Um, but really just embracing that exercise has to be a part of your daily routine. Just starting there and going from there, um, you're going to have so much success in 2018. So I'm going to hop in here and answer some of your questions here. Um, but I would love to hear from you. Where do you think you're going to start? Tell me why. I would love to hear when you share, I learn and I can help other people, um, you know, in reflection. So Let's see, I'm going to cycle through here. If you have questions, put them in the comment section below. I'm going to do my best to get to all of these. Uh, I think, oh, 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 I got to go all the way back up. So it looks like Bruce said, had this for 10 years now, feeling fatigue after exercising. Do I push through this or add more to my walking and weightlifting and add more to walking hills? had DBS and on no meds now going on four years. And then your comment trails off, Bruce. Fatigue is tricky. So I would say, Bruce, um, Lauren, we can link a video or link a blog post that I wrote about Parkinson's fatigue because fatigue can be a really tricky issue. And um, I'll make sure that I link a... Um, a link to the blog post right below your comment so that you can explore maybe what area of fatigue to explore first because it's a really complicated question. Essentially, there are maybe four different areas where this fatigue may be coming from that you could start at. So it's hard for me to answer that question specifically, Bruce, but I'm going to give you a resource so that you can investigate a little bit further. So thank you for that question. And if you have um, questions about fatigue for yourself and you're not Bruce, um, Check out that link. I'll put it under his comment soon. Or you can go to the blog, invigoratept.com, and search fatigue, and it should come up. Okay, let's see. We've got, Larry says, went for a brisk run with your do walk today. Negative three degrees outside. Oh, my goodness. No way. All right. Michelle says, you've done LSVT big and boxing. That's awesome. Randy's tuning in from Toronto. Personal trainer with 15 years experience and a cycling coach. Very good. Yes, Dr. J. Abrams out of, um, or Alberts out of the Cleveland Clinic is amazing. I just told someone about him the other day. Welcome. All right, let's see. Beverly's here from Texas. Perk says, great cycling classes specific to Parkinson's community starting in January. Check out Perk Training. 
Okay, perk training. Haven't heard of you, but we will check you out. All right, um, Tino says, what is best once a day or twice a day? Tino, once a day. Don't kill yourself to work out twice a day. If you can get to the point where you're working out once a day, that's wonderful. Um, if you're currently not working out at all, and um, you think that working out one day a week would be a victory, then work out one day a week. So you don't have to work out twice a week. Work out once in a short period of time um, and get the benefits and then go on with your day. I realize it's getting dark here. My light is fading. All right, Mammy says, it's so cold here that I don't want to leave the house. I totally understand, Mammy. We're here too. I had a message from someone the other day, though, that said it was negative 40 degree wind chill in Canada, and she went outside and walked outside for 15 minutes. So I have no excuse. She, it was negative 40 degree wind chill. That, isn't that crazy? That's amazing. So anyway, um, Marie says, in capital area, in capital area, in New York State, I do a calendar of events. I would be happy to email anyone who would like who would like it sent to them. Great. If you're in New York and the capital area and central area in New York State, uh, Marie is going to be a great resource for you. Thank you, Marie. That's amazing. Oh, I love this community so much. Um, Amatola from the UK, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And then finally, it looks like we have Bonnie from Newfoundland. Got to admit that I've not been exercising since Christmas came in, but we'll stay, we'll be starting back up soon. Yes. So um, you are not alone, Bonnie. I think a lot of people get off track during the holidays. So if that's you and you're looking for Parkinson-specific exercise program, again, come check out the booster, invigoratept.com slash booster. It's five weeks. Um, it's completely online, Parkinson-specific, really challenging. I'm literally live the entire time um, checking in with you via Facebook, um, giving you motivational emails. We've got a tribe online that checks in, and we're very active in there. So I would love for you to be a part of our tribe. We start together on Monday, and if you need help getting moving, especially in this cold, um, it's a great, great program. So Cindy says, recovering from probable two cracked ribs, should I wait a few weeks before starting a fitness program? Yes. And I would go see a physical therapist. So Cindy, um, pain and difficulty breathing are definitely good. You know, if you're needing help, you've knocked yourself down a peg and you need help getting back up to where you were, that's where physical therapy can come into play. Unfortunately, with fractured ribs, those are just so painful that moving at all, as you know, is going to be um, really, really challenging. So comfort measures right now, making sure that you can kind of decrease the pain as much as possible and going in to see a physical therapist to help you um, regain your movement once you're feeling a little bit better would be a really good idea for you. Mammy says you're snow blowing. It takes 40 minutes. That's a great exercise too. Okay, so thank you guys so much for joining me. Again, go download the free PDF on the blog, totally free, um, made it just for you, and I would love to hear from you what you're planning on doing in 2018. And um, in the future, actually right now, if you feel like this video has been helpful for you, please share it, just hit share, put it on your page, put it in a support group somewhere. Um, the more people that know how to get started on an exercise program for their Parkinson symptoms, literally the better the world will be. So I appreciate you all. Um, let me know if you have any questions and I will be back the third Monday of January to talk about even more Parkinson's um, specific topics. So I am sending you all lots of big hugs as always. Keep moving and I will see you guys next time. Bye.